What's up guys, it's Eric Johnson from Airtay Throws Nation. Today's video, we are gonna do an interview excerpt from a few weeks back, I sat down with legendary throws coach, Tony Torelli, and if you're not familiar with Tony, he is just one of these guys who's been coaching for the last 30 plus years in Southern California. He's produced droves of 60 plus foot shot putters. He's had three guys over 210 feet in the discus. He's coached at the Olympic games. He is an internationally known coach. He happens to be a really great friend of mine. He is also my mentor and he by far has had the biggest impact on me and my program. He's had a big influence on me to create the throwing chain reaction system. So we sat down, we talked about some different things. And in this clip, we're gonna talk about mindset, process and a couple of things that you should really get your mind around because it's really what's going to set you up to be a successful thrower so hopefully you enjoy check it out right i'm going to throw 70 feet right now yeah like yes maybe in 10 years of doing really hard work and the mind to be able to focus for 1.5 seconds so everything's in the exact right place then maybe right. 75 feet yeah and how many people have done that in the history of the world that's the uh, I always joke around with my all my throwers and I'm like well you're a total knucklehead and then it's the post collegiate they're still kind of knuckleheads right <laughs> well but part yeah. of that is our society everybody wants instant gratification right I mean, I'm gonna throw 70 feet right now yeah like yes maybe in 10 years of doing really hard work specifically working on these certain things right and you have the frame to do it and the strength levels to do it and the work ethic to do it right and the mind to be able to focus for 1.5 seconds so everything's in the exact right place then maybe right. 75 feet yeah and how many people have done that in the history of the world four well did timmerman do it timmerman through 75 krauser it's really the three dudes in one meet last year walsh Kraus yeah so it's like five dudes five and andretti guys. right uh and uh, also, or uh, not Andre, but you know who I'm talking about. Barnes, the, too. The Atari, and Barnes, and the right? The world time, record. So record. Six games. Yeah, that's it. In the history of the event. Yeah. So, yeah, you got a chance. <laughs> Clearly, you're a very pragmatic, uh, the realist coach. And that's why, um, obviously, good point starting out and, and the patience is the, is the tough factor. You know, I have a, a member in Australia. We talked about it, and they use the system. It's a dad who learned, right? So our system helped him learn. We have a couple. We have actually a bunch of really great coaches down there. But he's got a, his daughter is like nine years old, and she looks incredible the way the kid moves. And then we have another coach, same thing. He had a daughter that's 10, moves incredible. And we were talking and she was getting beat the first year and dad was like, don't worry about it. The, what you're doing now, next year, and then she just blew past everybody right. because she was establishing those fundamentals. And I think that's a hard thing for a lot of kids to learn because sometimes at that age, there's just some kids who, he's just a he giant 10 year old and they can yeah. muscle something out yeah. there. But I always tell people like, we'll see where that 10 year old is when he's 17 right. and where you are at 17 and how much and who's doing what and you know sometimes those those youth kids they're just big and they're not big when they get older and the kid that was small becomes big and that makes me think of the question of you know the instant success the the four-year strategy I think that's how people need to understand this isn't a yeah let me see if I'm gonna be good at this because you might be bad at it the first year there have been people but it's almost impossible yeah, right away. You know, you can throw far standing or, you know, that might happen, something like that. But you're, if you look technically at what you're doing, if you, if you're first year throwing, throwing full throw. Right. You're terrible. <laughs> yeah, you, you really is. are. Yeah, no, it's, it's true. And it's easier in the shot put than it is in the discus. Right. The discus is harder. I, I always say that. Yeah. You know? And it's probably harder in the javelin and the hammer than it is in the other two events. Yeah. The, yes, you can throw standing, and if you're a big, strong kid, you can throw far. Okay, now let's put you back in the ring. Glide or spin and see how good you are. Right. And that's why most of those kind of people throw standing. Because they, their technique of their full throw is so bad, they can't throw as far as they throw standing. Right. But then you get addicted to that. That's mm -hmm. the problem that a lot of coaches, if you're still throwing standing, when you, after 10 or 12 weeks of work, something's, something's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and that's, I think, one of the things we talk about with the way we've kind of put together our program. You should be doing a full throw in a week. It won't be the prettiest. Right. But, but you're going to conceptually get an understanding. 
Like I've had camps and I was like, you know, girls doing stand throws and she can't convert. And I was like, how long have you been doing a stand throw? And she's like on her fourth year. And I'm like, why on earth? Like, you know, she's doing a full throw by the end of a camp one day and she's been doing stand throws for four years. And it's like, well, now you really changed the movement because you're only used to that. Now you've ingrained that. So to move into that position is, yeah. it, it's, it's a mess. It throws it all out the window. Right. The problem with a lot of kids being able to get in positions of good throwers is they don't have enough strength. And so if you're not teaching them well in the weight room right, and doing things that carry over to the ring, right, you know, so if you're lifting bodybuilding or CrossFit or that those things aren't going to help you carry over to the ring. Maybe the first year or so, just getting people in shape, something like one of those kind of workouts could, a hit program could benefit. Right. But eventually you're going to have to get specific to the sport. Right. And if you don't, then you're going to be in the same boat again. You're not going to carry over and they even might throw far, but they're not throwing as far as they could throw. Where probably you and I have uh, a lot of similarity. I basically say what our system is intended to do is is teach 70 meter discus technique but you're not going to get to 70 meters for a long time if ever but the idea is you know you want to move as technically as efficient as possible there's a process to that and everybody has a different timeline but that was a combo of getting better technically with the event and getting strength that can be applied to the ring yeah uh, I thought a great idea was the former U.S. Uh, head weightlifting coach for the USA weightlifting team was from Poland. And they, weightlifting up to members 14 or 15 years old, was judged like gymnastic. So you were judged on your technique, not on how much weight. Mm. So everybody did the same weight, and then the judges would give you a 5.5 or a 9.3, or a, and you got judged on your technique, and so you won the competition because you had the best technique, mm. not because you lifted the most weight. And so, but then that develops really good technique. And so then these kids now go in to start adding effort and adding tempo. They're able to handle the weights better right. because their technique's good. Mm-hmm. Throwing is the same way. You're just egoed all the time as a coach and say, let's see how far you can throw. Right. Yeah. And it's not going to work. And you know, it's funny and you, and, and that's true. And so, you know, like I, I told you, our, our approach with what we're teaching and, and breaking things down into the pillars is, uh, and the first thing we actually are teaching is how to hold the discus right, how to get comfortable. It should just be comfortable. Yeah. You should be able to move it. You see the top guys, they spin it, they move it around. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, even I can, you know, I can move the discus around. It's, I don't have to think twice about it. I can do all kinds of stuff with it. Most kids are, you know, right. cupping and shortening their arm and, you know, they're doing this and that completely, I always say, overrides every single thing you're going to try to do with your technique. As soon as you do this with your arm, it throws over. So we start there. We start with the, the shot position. Like you said, that you know, I see this all the time, especially now with everybody on phones and games, the shoulders, the scaps, you know, they're weak. And then they, I got a kid right now, the, the hand's always here. So, he, and it's like, dude, like here, your glide, you're here, you know, rotation, you're going to be here. Crease the elbow, flat, push. Like you said, we're pushing this way. And, uh, uh, you know, just make me think of it again. That's a big thing with kids today. Two things. Their Achilles, because they don't tie their shoes, or they walk on the back of them, mm-hmm. and their shoulder. With the kids who are really that way, it's it's a full year. Yeah. Just strengthening those things that make them right. do what they have to do. A big thing is Russians 100 years ago, muscle tonus. Sitting up straight, holding yourself up is the best weightlifting you can do. Yeah. Slouching and putting yourself, you know, because this is 24 hours a day. So that is going to make the brain work faster than doing some pulls. And you need to do that to strengthen mm. those things. But just standing up straight as far as core and structure goes right. is, go- is going to solve a lot of your problems. But they have to be reminded to do it. Yeah. Appreciate Again, it. Yeah, the, the thing that for everybody, just remember, this is kind of key for those beginners and coaches. It's a process. you got to learn. I mean, the process of learning it, applying it, you have to have that mindset. And there's, I always tell people, I like to get people better fast. I know you like to get people better fast. But there's a way, and you can, you're not going to cheat the physics or the biomechanics or the strength needs. So you better develop good positions. And that's the aspect. Getting better fast doesn't necessarily mean your marks are better. Yes. But you're getting better. Yes. 
That's what kids don't understand either. They want instant gratification. Coach tells me I'm getting better, but I'm not throwing any right. further. But it's like, just wait. You know, maybe it's the horsepower. Maybe it's the mass. Maybe, you know, it could, it's other things that take right. time to develop.